Welcome back. It is Sunday, August 27th in the MLB. Our three favorite picks are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday. Hey, a solid forward today. Nothing we can complain about there. Winning back a little over two units. The, the outs prop parlay. Cash Bradish got his regular outs parlay. Bichette and Trey got it done. Vladdy got a single. He clutched up. Uh, Mookie and Adley. Adley did not get his job done. And Royals plus one and a half. So dang close, man. They were so close. Almost at it. Yeah, no, they got absolutely smoked. But four and two day, we'll take it. Nothing to complain about. Logan's retired from game picks as, as of today. He's done. And I don't blame him. He's got a great parlay coming your way. But let's stay tuned and let's talk about Bet365. You've seen us been doing our, our hit parlays over there because they give you the best odds. So take advantage of it if it is in your state, in New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Colorado, or Iowa. Take advantage of it. You can sign up and also get $200, $200 in bonus bets on the MLB. How do you do it? Top link in description. You just click that. Deposit 10 bucks. Make a $1 money line bet on any MLB team today. Regardless if it wins or loses, you get those $200 in bonus bets. And we've talked about it time and time again. They give you the best hit parlay odds out there. They always have everyone up there for one plus hit, so you don't have to worry about that half a hits thing or one and a half hits that you might get on DraftKings. Like I'm saying, if you're in New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Colorado, or Iowa, take advantage of it. I'm just telling you that. But let's dive into our favorite plays. I don't have an outs parlay today. I did see a comment saying they wanted some outs. There really weren't any that I liked, but I'm going to go to an under and let's talk about it. If you have uh, if you had this under yesterday, you have PTSD when I'm going to say what it is. Because I'm going to Padres and Brewers under four and a half in the first five, plus 110 on FanDuel. Now, I would love to get this at five and a half. However, that was like minus 160. And I really can't come out here and say, hey, let's put a full unit on a minus 160 play. No, this is not the right channel. But I think the plus 110 at the under four and a half is a good line. We do see some games end on five. And if that happens, I'll be in pain. But I think we had a good chance of this one being a low scoring game. Now, I say you'd have PTSD because if you had this pick yesterday, I think there were one run one or two maybe two or through the first four and up the half innings and then five runs right to the dome from the brewers in the bottom of the fifth felt like i had that under however i think these offenses are going to dry up because we've seen the brewers actually score five runs in two respective innings and to ruin the first five under the past two games i think this is a lower scoring game let's dive into it now we look at michael waka who's going to start for the padre he's been very good 2.63 era and a 1.07 whip now in his last start first milwaukee he was not good four and a third seven earned runs april 14th Look, we can't afford that start today. We, if he does that again, we will not be cashing. But it's in April. We saw him struggle. 6.75 ERA and 1.58 whip. Since April, though, 12 starts. Look at the numbers. 1.15 ERA and a .89 whip in 12 starts. This is a guy in Waka that's been in the league since 2013. Did deal with a little bit of an injury, or uh, you know, I believe in July or so. But he's back, and he's back, pitched two pretty good games. And is it weird to say that maybe the pitch clock just messed with him? No, I mean, the guy's been pitching in the MLBs for you know 10 or so years since like 2013. The pitch clock messed with a lot of guys. We remember back in April, we saw some guys that we had known. You know, you talk about like the Max Scherzers, the Justin Verlanders of the world. They were really struggling with the, uh, adjusting to the pitch clock. I think Michael Walker is one of those guys, but we've seen him over those last 12 starts, an ERA at 1.15 and a lower than one whip. He's been really good, and I expect him to be pretty good today. Now, you look at Waka and you look at the Brewers, so you look at over the last 14 days, the Brewers offense, 27th in batting average, 0.2 on one, 30th in slugging, and 28th in WRC plus versus right in the pitchers. Now, sure, they've had the Padres numbers so far. They got to Darvish, got to the Padres starter yesterday, but I still think that I don't trust this Brewers offense a whole lot. Now, they are better at home. They've scored seven and five runs. It just feels like the Brewers Brewers are due one of those games where they just, you know, only put up, you know, one or two runs. I mean, sure, the seven and five runs, five of them, five of all five came in one inning, and then the five of the seven came in one inning as well. So this, you got to avoid that big inning, and I think Waka can do that. If you limit that catastrophic inning to one or two runs, I think we got a good chance here. Now, starting for the Brewers, is going to be Adrian Hauser, 4.28 ERA and a 1.46 whip. Hauser is better at home, 4.12 ERA versus a 4.1 on the road, or 4.41 on the road. But I look at his opponent batting average, 258 compared to 305 on on the road now the ERA doesn't really show a big discrepancy. However, it's just he has had a ton of starts this year, and you flash back to 2022. You look at the home versus road ERAs; it's a big difference, 3.68 compared to a 6.14 in 2021. Big difference, 2.81 compared to a 3.67. So I expect these gaps to kind of grow as the season goes on. I really trust Hauser at home. Don't trust him on the road at all. And if you look at July, I mean, really since July, which has been a, bu a bunch of his starts, he's faced a gauntlet of his schedule. He had to face the the Braves twice. He had to face the Dodgers in dodger stadium he had to face the rangers a very good offense he had to face the reds in great american ballpark and he had to face the cubs all teams that are hitting righties very well it's been a tough stretch for him but i like the matchup here today because over the last 14 days padres 28th 
in batting average below 200, 27th in slugging, and 25th in WRC plus versus right-handed pitchers. They really haven't been hitting righties too well. We've seen kind of that in the series so far. And we actually look at the batters first Hauser. I won't pull up all the stats, but look at the top four of the lineup. First Hauser, Hai Sang Kim, 0 for 4. Juan Soto, 0 for 5. Machado, 1 for 11. Tatis, 1 for 4. If you can control those four guys, and I will live with whatever the five through nine do on the Padres offense. If he can control those guys, that's really how the Padres score majority of their runs. Like I said, the first five under is 0-2 so far in this series. I really think this was a slow start starting game. I didn't want to take the full game under because you never really know what the bullpen's coming in. I don't trust the Padres bullpen too much. So I'd rather take this one. I think Waka can hold down the job for us against the Brewers. I think Hauser can do his thing at home against the Padres. So give me the under four and a half or plus 110, I think is a great value. Play that to right around minus 105, minus 110. You should get plus money though on it, regardless of what book you're on. But Logan, like I said, you got a parlay game coming and I like what you cooked up. Where are you going today? Yeah, it's the first time I've ever done and a hit, hits, runs, and RBIs parlay but we're gonna go ahead and do that with a player props uh we got austin riley of the braves and we got luisa rise of the marlins over one and a half hits runs and rbis you parlay them together you get plus 165 on DraftKings. now if you're uh, right right off the bat if you're like logan i don't have DraftKings. well if, if there if there's a book like bet 365 or fandle you can, you can go parlay these two guys to get a hit and then add a third hitter in with what, what you want and you'll probably get close to similar odds in this one. I, I'm not really sure what it comes out to, but you had a third hitter of your choice. Do a little uh, brainstorm in there. But I really do like the hits, runs, RBIs market. It's one of those markets that I wish I would take more advantage of because it's one of those DraftKings uh, specials. Again, if you don't have DraftKings and you do have it in your area, you really should get it for baseball because they do offer a lot of uh, markets on this one. Let's start with Luis Arise though he's he's going to be the first one to start out of these two yesterday Luis Arise you know one of the best hitters in baseball his mini five game hit streak came to an end I I like Austin and I like taking Luis Arise off a hitless game because the law of averages on the year says he won't go back to back games uh, without a hit it's time to start a new hit streak against Trevor Williams and the Nationals today uh, Rise has seen Trevor Williams before, four for nine, hitting 444 with a home run against Trevor Williams in his career. Now, if Luis Rise goes out and get a homer today, I'll buy a jersey. I'll, I'll do it right now. The percentages are not there uh, for Luis Rise to do that, but that would cash this HRR prop uh, in, in epic fashion. But the reason why I'm taking the hits, runs, and RBIs prop is because there's a chance, you know, if if a Luis Rise does get walked, which he could be pitched around, and I mean, he's one of their best hitters in their lineup. If he does get pitched around, I want that to count for something because if you're just taking a bases prop or a hits prop, the walks do you no good. But at least the HRR prop would put him on base and uh, have the opportunity for him to come home and score, which would count as a run. Trevor Williams has a 290 expected bat batting average against the Marlins roster, and there should be several uh, opportunities for these Marlins hitters to get on base today. I just really, I, I think they're going to do some damage against Trevor Williams today, and those on-base opportunities will hopefully create RBI opportunities opportunities for Luis Arise. We look at Arise, he's batting 382 at home this season, which is ridiculous. And his last multi-hit game came exactly two weeks ago on August 13th. I'm just saying, I'm not calling a multi-hit uh, game, but it would be really cool if, if uh, he had one today, because that would also cash this bet. I just think there's a lot of pathways to victory in this one. And Trevor Williams, he had a great last start against the Phillies last weekend. I'd, I'd be shocked if he did, uh, you know, two back-to-back -back good starts. Now let's talk about the the second leg of the parlay, which is Austin Riley. He, we got he has to cash his HRRs as well. He faces the Giants in a bullpen game with an offense as powerful as the Braves. Riley should get several hits, runs, and RBI opportunities. We've seen it all year long with this juggernaut Braves offense. Yesterday. Riley had four HRRs, which obviously cashes easily, and he did have a home run. And that home run yesterday ended his mini drought uh, for homers and gives me confidence that he's seeing the Giants pitching well, and he's hopefully going to see the Giants' bullpen arms well today. He, in the limited sample size, he's 0 for 2 against the starter, or projected starter for the Giants uh, in, in Beck. But Beck won't pitch deep into this game, and honestly, if he does, I, I, I would be shocked, but not so shocked because it's the Giants and their bullpen does whatever they want game in and game out. Riley has cashed this over in two out of five games against San Francisco, which is, you know, roughly under 50%, but he has a hit in four out of five games against San Fran this season. If the, if Riley can get us the hit, 
The, the run and the RBI opportunities, I still think, will be there. We look at San Francisco. They're 22nd in bullpen ERA the last two weeks. I'm not scared of their bullpen games really all that much because they, they do load bases. They do you know pitch themselves into jams. I think Riley can take advantage of that. We look at Austin Riley. He's only hitting 240 on the 249 on the road, which is definitely not as good as he is on home, which is sometimes the reason I kind of stay away from Austin Riley road props. But that's also why we're getting a little bit of value, in my opinion, because the best hitters, the DraftKings is not scared to juice their line to two and a half HRRs. So I think we're still getting the solid one and a half uh, line for Austin Riley because, you know, he's just not as good on the road. With a total set at nine and a half, there should be plenty of runs in this game. And the Braves being the road team will get nine innings, nine innings of at-bats. So if they're even leading, it doesn't really matter because they are the road team. So I really do like this HRR prop parlay. Let's, let's see. It's got good value on it. Let's see if we can cash that one. But Austin, what else are you going with? Yeah, Logan, I like it. You're risking one unit to win 1.65 on two really good hitters. I think they get the job done. Now, a lot of people, like I said, wanted me to take an outs prop today, but there just wasn't one that I like. So I'm actually going to another under. It is Sunday. No one likes rooting for unders, but this is going to be one that I actually do like a lot. And it's going to be the Guardians and Blue Jays taking the under at nine runs, minus 105 on DraftKings. Now, do have some push potential here, obviously, at first notice. I mean, at the end with nine, we'll get our money back and we'll just be able to say, hey, we watched a fun game. But I think this is a good spot to go. Now, if you took the under yesterday you, you deserve to lose because obviously it was going to go over after logan took the under the or the over the first day and naturally the blue jays offense showed up yesterday but i'm going to take this one and we're going to talk about the two pitchers and exactly why i'm taking it now noah Syndergaard will start for the guardians and i need a good start out of him not even good i just need okay start i just can't afford five earned runs here but look at his stats 6.42 era and a 1.4 whip his last start versus toronto a couple weeks ago five and two thirds six hits one earned run yeah, I mean, he pitched all right versus them. Sure, we'll take that. I really doubt he duplicates that performance. He'll probably give up more runs than that. But I also don't trust the Blue Jays to consistently hit. I mean, we've seen this Blue Jays team all year long. This is a team that could get bases loaded with no outs. And it's still not guaranteed they're going to score one. This is the Blue Jays team that also went hit 333 as a team yesterday. I think 11 for 33. Biggest thing. Five for 11 with runners in scoring position. If you're a Blue Jays fan, you are taking victory laps because they do not do that consistently. And I wouldn't be surprised if they were stranding some base runners today. Noah will give them the base opportunities. They'll have guys in base. So whether they can get those timely hits, and I can't trust the Blue Jays offense to do it consistently, especially when everyone's going to be backing the Blue Jays today, given that everyone wants to fade Noah Syndergaard. They'll back them on the first five. You know, they'll back them team total. They'll back them run line. I don't think they show up today. Now, on the other, I mean, we talked about over the last 30 days, the Blue Jays, 27th in batting average, 219, 27th in slugging, 25th in WRC plus first right handed pitcher. So, the other day, not hitting righties too well. Yesterday, they hit, they've been hitting lefties really well, which you saw them hit no, uh, Logan Allen well yesterday. However, they're getting another righty today. I don't trust them. Now, I'll take my chances against the Blue Jays offense. Now, next up is going to be Yusei Kikuchi, and he's going to start for the Blue Jays. Now, you look at his numbers, 3.52 ERA and a 1.23 whip. His last start for Cleveland, seven innings pitched, three hits, one earned run. That was a couple weeks back. Now, he's coming off a rough start against the Orioles. Obviously, a team that has seen him a ton and knows how to hit him pretty well. This is a Garden team that really hasn't seen him a ton. Sure, they just saw him a couple weeks ago, but they've been play played play Plenty of games since then and I, I know normally I'm not going to say hey you know Noah's Noah just pitched super well versus the the Blue Jays he'll do it again Kukuchi just pitched super well versus the Blue versus the Guardians he'll do it again I'm normally not a guy to say hey they're going to duplicate those performances however over the last 30 days the Guardians are stinking up the joint against lefties let's talk about it Guardians 30th and batting average 0.184 that's terrible 30th and slugging 0.269 and 30th and wrc plus at just a 41 that is abysmal versus left-handed pitchers now sure the guardians have seen him before so they'll probably have better uh chances to get it done this is also guardian team that i feel like kikuchi's weakness is when he gets hit hard and he gives up you know those extra base hits home runs however this is the guardian team that doesn't hit for a lot of power when you see that slugging percentage that's not even close to the 29th team the last two weeks though and then when when we get out of the, the this game, we're gonna need obviously the bullpens to clutch up because you can obviously have a game go zero to zero through six innings, which we've had before, and the game still goes over. But you need the bullpens to clutch up. The Toronto eighth in bullpen ERA, two point nine two. Cleveland fourth in bullpen ERA over these last two weeks. My prey is that Syndergaard gives us a decent performance. Kikuchi can pitch a masterclass if we're lucky, and then the bullpen can come in and close it down. Maybe it's a four to three final score. Maybe even lower would be even nicer. I just think the nine is a little bit too high for this one. I think Kikuchi could legitimately give up one or zero earned runs and if Cindergard can just not give up you know five 
I think we had a chance here, but I just don't think the Blue Jays are going to be free money today. Although they probably should be, given they're going up against Syndergaard, who really stinks. But I think he'll at least give us a chance to cash here today. I think this under at nine is going to be a decent one. So, Logan, that those are our three favorite picks of the day. Any final thoughts before we get out of here? I, I like them. A couple unders, some player props. Let's get after it. Exactly. And two weeks from today, we will have some NFL football. We'll have a ton of different uh, videos. So get excited for the NFL's back yesterday, college football. We had a pretty good uh, record in our video. Cash hole plus 150. We'll take that. If you want to check out any other videos, they're on the screen. We have, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. If you want to sign up for Bet365, details down below. Take advantage of that. Let's have a great Sunday. We'll be back on a Monday for more, some more picks. We'll see you guys then. Peace.